All right, it looks like we are ready to hop into the next match here pretty soon. Um, we can pull up the standings and see what's doing well. I know there's a lot of Tron going on the top tables. Obviously, Jody was having a great run with Martyr just now. Got taken down by Tron, which is unfortunate for Jody. Fun fact, Jody's entire deck is in Chinese, I believe. I sat next to him round one of the main event and his opponent was like what does abiding grace do what does martyr do what is it what do any of these cards do and jody was like well let me explain sorry i had to uh borrow this deck from a friend so i don't have any english cards and we see jody again up against blue white control this is gonna be a absolute haymaker of a match here because well jody's deck doesn't really win it just tries not to die back again with mono white martyr Looks like we're in the middle of some battles over the ring. Haywire Mike coming down. Probably going to take out this ring on two. It looks like we cut in a little later into the match. So they already have a board developed here. At some point, there was a ring cast and Leyline took care of it. Looks like there's a Narset. Harder veils under the Skyclave Apparition as well, preventing Jody from drawing extra cards with the ring. So this is the... One is it? No. Uh, it got taken care of by the Sorry, powerful pioneer yeah. three drops, I could call it. <laughs> Do you ever think you'd see mono white martyrs? Uh, it's it's been a long time since a thing like Soul Sisters uh, was in the meta. To see it today in 2024, does that surprise you? It does a little bit, but Jody has been on this deck for quite a while now. He actually took this to RC Denver as well and had a hell of a run. He ended up making top 32 and re-qualifying for the Pro Tour with it, so... Jody is quite a force to be reckoned with, absolutely, and he shows it over and over again, especially this weekend at the Hunter Burton Memorial Tournament. He's fighting the good fight, gaining life, and doing it for a good cause as well. We see a Martyr come down for Jody. The Looks like he's got... on the stack resolves. Well, he had a Martyr. Three cards in hand for Jody. It wasn't going to gain too much life off of that Martyr, but Supreme Verdict is going to sweep up the board. This Narset's going to be exiled forever. We are going to get a token, though, from... Is an illusion? Yeah. Four, four illusion token coming... Or, three, sorry, three, three illusion yep. token coming down. You said that card exiling rings instead. Flooded Strand and... A Ooh, passing the turn from... Days Undoing in hand. No Narset right now, but that's definitely a powerful combo. Something uh, Jody's going to be have, have to be mindful of in the future. Absolutely, that is a brutal combination for a deck that's just trying to abuse the one ring. Because Jody's deck doesn't really win. It kind of just beats down with a bunch of 1-1s one or 1-2s one because the Thraben Spectre, 1-1 uh, one -one in the Kamis and the Martyrs. It just tries to abuse ring and gain a bunch of life and stay alive. We see the Abiding Grace come down, return Haywire Might, exile the Leyline Binding. Back on the board. Coming into play tapped because Jody said, I'm activating it immediately. Give me that card. The ring really a force to be reckoned with this weekend, really coming back uh, fast and hot after uh, the recent bannings last Monday. Oh, yeah, no more Violent Outburst to compete with the rings anymore. Ring has started to take over Modern a little bit more. In for three, says Jarek. Jody down to. 18 it seems. Orion Revealed coming in, hard cast, uh, drawing three. The most expensive ancestral recall you could ask for. <laughs> Little Jace's ingenuity. Preordain bottom two picks up a ring. One, two, three. Hold up, hold up. I have a feeling we're going to be seeing that ring come down very soon. Bins an extra flooded strand. Quite flush with mana, looks like seven on the table. Good for double spelling. Looks like Field of Rune was the pickup for Jody, double solitude in hand. The ring pings here uh, on Jody's side are not that menacing when almost all of his creatures gain him so much life. Pretty negligible of an effect. Absolutely, that's what the decks build around. Just abuse the ring as hard as you can. Uh, Jody was doing a count there. He said, uh, you have four land types. I'm not going to get binding, so I'm going to activate my ring before you have Leyline binding up. Oh, no, no, land destruction spell here. Oh, it looks like he takes it back. 
Who's thinking about it? Um, actually, he's like, eh, well, I got some options here. You see the reprieve in hand as well. Might be clutch to reprieve his own spell in response to a counter spell to draw a card and have an opportunity to recast it again down the line. That is some gaming with foresight there. Oh, yeah, that's the old reman tricks from 2017. Oh, yeah. Jody says, I think I'm just going to pass the turn and get back my martyr with the abiding grace. Hedge maze. Surveil. Puts it on top. Likes what he sees. And then Field of Rune is going to take out that Zagoth Triumph. Trying to take him off of Domain so that way Leyline Binding costs a little bit more. I do like the inclusion of a lot of Surveillance in these blue-white decks. It just gives you extra percentage points and card advantage whenever you need them. Yeah, it's very interesting to see how at home the Surveillance have been in Modern. Printed very recently, but they seem to have a found a home in almost every deck. Oh yeah, they... If you uh, went to RC Denver and you were looking for Surveillance on site, you know that all of the vendors sold out of them pretty much immediately. Yeah, you were pretty out of luck. Three mana, Prismatic Reprieve. Ending. Targeting uh, Combining Grace. <laughs> Back to the hand. Cody's gonna draw off the Reprieve. Now, no more... Yeah, just a ring here because we can't Back to the recast ring. the Prismatic Ending because we don't have another colored source that's not blue or white, so it can only penny for two currently. Rips the card off the ring. Eric now has protection this turn. Um, in with the 3-3. Three, three. Blocking with Martyr. Oh, okay. And you sack it and gain 15. Mm -hmm. yep. Seeing Eagles of the North in Jody's hand also, he might cycle that at end of turn to pick up maybe a Mistvale Plains, which is one of his unique planes. That lets him put cards on the bottom of his library so he doesn't deck out with the ring. Very heads up deck design there. Looks like no cycles of Eagle, but uh, just a basic planes for Jody. Looking at his hand, thinking, hmm, am I going to draw off my ring? Probably. Also got it. Is that a temporary lockdown in hand? Temporary lockdown has definitely been seeing some play this weekend. It's been very interesting to see. He said, I'm just going to lock down this token. One token exchanged. Three mana removal spell. Powerful. <laughs> Mainly see that card a lot in Pioneer, so it's been very interesting to see the integration. I like to call Jody's deck a Pioneer deck with ring. Because <laughs> <laughs> the individual power level of most of Jody's cards is very low, but the synergies with the one ring just make it so that way it all comes together at the end. Yeah, when you put them all together, they are quite a force to be reckoned with. Seven cards in hand for Jody again. Gas is back up with the ring. Takes out the ring on the side of Jarek as well. One, two, three, four. Prismatic ending, X4 targeting the ring. Oh, you got a red. You got a red. Jody said, oh, you have a red. I didn't even realize. <laughs> Draws a card with a clue. Do we have Jody's list? I was curious to see if he's playing any of the new Thraben Inspector that just came out. It's a functional reprint of Thraben Inspector. Just another one mana one two. Looks like he's playing three of regular Thraben Inspector. None of the new ones. None of the new ones. That's it. No, he should have done it. it. He should have just done it. Split novice inspector. There we go. And that's the functional reprint from Murders at Karlov Manor. I think that one's cooler than Thraven Inspector. What do you think? I do like the art, but Thraven Inspector. He's been around a long time. You got to pay your tributes. Thraven Inspector does have that retro bordered print, so mm -hmm. that's. Yeah. I mean, Jody's not playing it though, so. Yeah. Bring back a. Uh... Yeah. What are we getting back here? Martyr? Back a martyr. That synergy right there. <laughs> you see Jody at 32. He's just... I guarantee you this match is going to go to time. Doing what the martyr deck does, gaining all the life, kind of putting a standstill on the match. Yeah, full grip from Jarek's side too. Solitude or solitude. Solitude on solitude. Solitude beatdowns. I don't know if this is safe for Twitch. Solitude on solitude action. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Still seeing that Day's Undoing in Garrick's hand not doing much right now. We have not seen another Narset come down. No, we but he do. does have that prismatic ending as well as a couple more Solitude, Supreme Verdict, Counterspell. Supreme Verdict definitely looks appetizing here. And we see Subtlety taking out that Eagles of the North. The Eagles of the North ETB reads whenever it enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus O. Oh. I believe so. It should be plus one, plus one, let's be honest. For a six mana spell, it should do a little bit more. It's a three three yeah. flyer. We gotta get we gotta get better with the raids here. Subtlety, where is Jody putting that card? He is going to put it back on top. Eagles of the North on top. That thing's coming back down again next turn. Pump the idiot of the team. Excuse me. It's, uh, Sorry, we gotta put some respect on Jody's creatures. It's possible that uh, Jody gets blown out here by the Supreme Verdict, though. Having put that um, Eagles of the North on top, is it possible you think he gets kind of blown out by that? Uh, the creature is gonna come back with Biting Grace anyways, but there is that Prismatic Ending in hand still, so maybe we see Prismatic Ending on three, take out the Abiding Grace mm -hmm. and the Supreme Verdict. That could be a line that he takes, yeah. It looks like that's what's going on here. Abiding Grace down. This might be tough for, uh... Oh, no cast of Supreme Verdict. Interesting. Nah, not enough on the table yet. I mean, this is only a swing for four here. Right, right. I'm just gonna counterspell the Eagles. That's fair. Nine. Down to nine goes Jarek. <laughs> Deep downs of Martyrs. A little long ones. Let's go. Um, One ones will get there eventually. Oh, yeah. Abiding Grace is a very powerful spell in a lot of matchups that where you're trying to stall the game as much as possible it gives you so much inevitability it is it's a card definitely not seen too much in modern but uh it feels like it found a perfect home in these uh mono white martyr decks very powerful card oh jody's gonna activate mist veil planes bottom field of ruin i mentioned that earlier he does not want to deck out but these matchups will go very long to the point where mm -hmm. one of these players might end up decking out yeah, especially both of them being on ring, you draw so many cards. Yeah, here comes a Solitude to take out one of the Martyrs. I s assume Jody's going to sacrifice in response. That reveal is exactly his entire what we're seeing here. Three cards. We see a Winds of Abandon, double Solitude. Winds of Abandon, another Modern Horizons card that we don't see too much today, but fits right at home in this Mono White Martyr, Martyr build. Oh, love me an overloaded Winds of Abandon. Another hard cast Solitude. These Solitudes have really been pulling a lot this game. Yeah, Jarek still hasn't picked up... Sides. Jarek still hasn't picked up the Kahira as a companion, so... Oh, that's interesting. Still has a lot of hand, cards in hand to cast. And we mm -hmm. see another ring come down. Jordy didn't reveal an answer to the ring yet, so I'd be curious to see if he has one in hand. Or if he even cares about it. He might just like want Jarek to draw his entire deck and win that through that way, as opposed yep. to beating him down from 11. Untap upkeep. Huh. Jody rips a card and. Dude. Soul Cauldron. The soul Cauldron. That's a little spicy. I have not seen this out of Jody yet, but it meets the counterspell immediately, which mm -hmm. is expected. And he slams a ring. He was like, that was counterspell, babe. Yep. Now, active the Soul Cauldron is very cool in this list because you can give everything the martyr ability. So you can have yeah. the creatures get sacked, but you can give Raven Inspector the martyr ability, mm -hmm. sacrifice it, bring it back with Biting Grace, make another treasure. The value is insane. Being able to reflex that when your creatures get targeted, get the value still seems incredibly powerful here. Two cards for Jarek. One, two, three, Narset. Oh, we see that Narset. This possibly unlocks the Day's Undoing combo. I think we saw that Verdict in hand as well, so maybe we, do. we just Verdict this turn and then untap into Day's Undoing if Jody doesn't have any way of dealing with the Narset. Looks like he's one short of hard cast in his other Solitude, so Narset might just be uncontested here. Does he evoke? Uh, evoking Solitude? Yeah, let's see an evoke. Yep, Pitching Supreme Verdict. Supreme Verdict, interesting. 
trying to daze undoing right now. Looks like Jarek's not confident that this Narset's gonna stick around. Right, but we do see a reprieve in Jody's hand, so mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, this is not gonna work out ending. super well for Jarek. Oh, we got a prismatic ending the martyr here. I assume we will see that get sacked. That is correct. And not revealing the reprieve. He doesn't want Jarek to know that this day's undoing is not going to resolve this turn. What an incredibly heads up play from Jody. Yeah, Jarek says cast day's undoing. Jody says, I'll reprieve it. Oh. Very heads up play. Absolutely. <laughs> I guess that's how you get to be one of the legends of the game, right? Oh yeah, that's All how right. you qualify for the Pro Tour, playing a deck like Barter. <laughs> Rips two more cards. Oh, just kidding. Activates ring, but cannot due to Narset's ability. Just kidding. Yeah, Jared pointed the Narset so fast. He was like, Narset. Look, yeah. look at my Narset. She's sure. anime and she's amazing. And she's whiteboarded. Look is at she? that. She is. White bordered. Disgusting. Beautiful, you mean. Mm -hmm. Absolutely lovely. Oof. Yeah. Oh yeah, here's a close up on that Narset. That is the Japanese alternate art mystical archives print. Uh maybe not mystical Ar archives. I think it's the just the Some Japanese. Part Japanese yeah. edition. Producer pan out from that. Nobody needs to see that. No, no, absolutely yep. gorgeous. Much respect to Derek here. Yep. There's that Thraven Inspector we were talking about earlier. Coming down, getting that clue token. Now, I imagine this Ranger Captain Vios is going to get sacked in Jarek's upkeep to prevent the Days Undoing for one more turn. But things are actually looking pretty bad for Jody. Yeah, we have a lot of stall here, but we're not actually uh, closing the game that fast. No, these Thraven Inspectors are not very good at pressuring the Narsa. I mean, they could chip in for a couple points of damage here. Mm-hmm. But Jarek's got three more cards coming off the ring. Maybe Jarek actually ends up dying to the ring well, here. He has um, Force of Negation, possibly backup for the Days Undoing combo. Can't cast it this turn, though. Yeah. Because of the Rager Captain. But Correct. Potentially next turn. Mm hmm. Yeah, if Jody passed the turn with the ring instead of activating on the main face, he could have gotten one card off of it because of the Narset, but could not get more than one. Yes. And we see the Thraven Inspectors go at the Narset, down to three. He is not concerned with taking the damage from the ring, though. Jody <laughs> Kiri is setting, sitting at a healthy 50 life uh, in this game. Not too worried about those triggers. Not at all. Amiri is coming down, which means he gets to recur, I believe it's any permanent mm -hmm. from the graveyard. It might might be incorrect. Might be Let's do that. Card. Let's give Amiri a, a read here. But I'm gonna guess this day. Miria enters the battlefield. Or creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield. Mm, okay, creatures only. But notably, the Days Undoing does shuffle the graveyard, so it might not be super relevant here mm -hmm. in the immediate future. Correct. Days Undoing on yep. the stack. Happening. Resolves. Joey says, I get to draw one card. And Jack says, Yep, you get one. I get seven. <laughs> Very fair for a three drop. Absolutely. <laughs> Doesn't love a good time twister. One, two, All these players are playing very rapidly because they're not trying to acquire a draw at this point in the tournament. One of them is going to have to win to have a shot at top eight. I believe nine, three, and one is not going to be good enough. Yes, I, I also think that. So they are really trying to fight hard here to not get this draw. These rings, the life gain, all kind of attribute to maybe a longer match. A lot of game actions to take for both of these players. Absolutely. They have to think very quickly. I'm going to draw three of this before blocks. Sure. Looking for another solitude. They're One, getting kind two, of low on life here. I wonder if he's worried about these ring triggers the at all. Mm. He'll be fine. Jody's on two cards. He's probably going to go for the hard cast solitude here. Drops the five, drops the three. Mm. 
Ooh, this is kind of scary. Yeah, he, he might be getting a little too low here. We'll see if it matters. Is Jody Hand the answer? Oh. Nope, go to blocks. Gains three, goes back up to six, not dying to this ring just this turn. But that was scary. If Jody had a removal spell that wasn't a, a solitude. Mm -hmm. Jarek would have been dead. It's like a fail to find off the field of rune. Jody's grabbing another planes. Another field comes down as well. Martyr in the Take three. A three, go to three. All right. So notably, even though Jody has no cards in hand and the Solitude wants to get frisky, Jody can sack or block and then sacrifice the Martyr. And Jared won't gain any life. Yeah, no life there. And then he would die on upkeep to his ring triggers. Yeah, you see him going for four more cards. Possibly looking for a way out of this. Fort Teferi got picked up and Prismatic ending. I think this is Jarek's game to lose at this point. White Borders Teferi from Warden Spark Beautiful. also comes down. It's the alternate art anime version. Prismatic ending. Going right for the Martyr just like we talked about. Respond by sacrificing it to have it in the graveyard so it comes back with Amiria. Mm-hmm. Okay, kills the guy reach too, so he does not right. completely locked out of the game from the Narset. Eric is gonna have to shuffle but fail to find here. Eric does have to shuffle his library because technically he's got to look through it. Yes, Which comes correct. up very much in the mill matchup when they're trying to archive trap you and you cannot decline the search off a of field rune. We've seen lots of mill this weekend. It is a live and well. Very, very relevant text on that. Oh, the mill players will play mill no matter what the meta is. It's but true. now they're thriving. Yeah, it sure. seems like they have come out in force this weekend. Yep. Standard RCQ players. Jody rips a card to the ring, sacks the martyr, reveals Kami of the False Hope, which says sacrifice this card, prevent all combat damage this turn. Very powerful with the Biting Grace. Gate buys you pretty much infinite time. Eric going up to six, but losing four a turn. He always to fairy bounce the ring Very back true. to hand. Reset it. Reset it and then not gain, gain not gain damage. But it looks like he's electing to keep the ring on four. We plus the Teferi and pass. No direct damage in Jody's deck, so he's not really worried about getting burned out in any way, shape, or form. Martyr coming back. So this is gonna end my turn? No, it's just my turn. It's just my turn. So you what would happen went, is you would draw. Went a card to the graveyard? The yeah, so what's happening the is that Amiria was targeting the martyr and in response because we plus the Teferi, mm -hmm. we're casting instant speed days undoing to shuffle the graveyard back in. Since it's on your turn. Very, very nice. Since it ends the turn it would exile itself on my turn, but since we're casting. And Jody's asking, is my turn over? And Jarek's saying, No, your turn's not over. It only ends the turn if I cast it on my turn. Which is why this is a very powerful synergy to have if you have an Orcish Bowmasters so out. Because normally, if you have an Orcish Bowmasters and a Days Undoing, Days Undoing will end the turn, remove all of the Orcish Bowmaster triggers from the stack unless you cast it on your opponent's turn with the fairy. Very powerful combination there. Not relevant here, obviously, but a very <laughs> yeah, sweet yeah. other deck. Bit. See any Orcish Bowmasters coming from uh, Jody Keith anytime soon? Nope, not at all. <laughs> Neither system we playing Bowmaster mm -hmm. here. Take four down to two goes Jarek. Jody can pick up an additional card off this ring. Looks like the fairy's gonna bounce. Not drawing with the ring first either. It decides the only way I probably lose this game is by decking out, so. Four. Pick up and play Kahira. Attack for four. Jody goes down to like 42. Uh, six. <laughs> yep. Uh, surveil. Yeah, we'll see if Jarek can do enough damage here to uh, knock down Jody Keith from that 42 uh, life total. It's gonna take a while, but I think he's gonna be able to get there. He's got full control of this game. I, I would agree with that. I think the uh, position is heavily in Garrick's favor right now. Agreed. I think this is Jarek's game to lose. Uh, I think I'm through. 
Crack a clue, draw a card instead of activating the ring. That's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Discard two lands to hand size, eight cards in hand down. To, sorry, nine cards in hand down to seven. Yep. And then you'll take three from the ring. That's another Eagles of the North. Yeah, right, Eagles of the North coming into play off of Amiria. Very cool. I'm going to pay six mana for this 3-3 three, three flyer. It comes into play for free. It's been a slog fest of a game. Holy. Absolutely. Especially when maybe your nerves are a little... Uh, on edge, you've been gaming all weekend. Now you've got to uh, lunge through this 10. absolute uh, tough match here. Both Earth players King. gaining life, protection, you know. I imagine both these players are absolutely exhausted after playing 13 rounds of controlly style decks this weekend. Absolutely. But they're taking it like champs. They know what they're doing, they're ready to play. Their decisions have been quick and precise. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, now these plays want to get a draw, so it's just rapid gaming, fast shuffling. Pretty clean play, too. At the only real misstep I've seen is Jody activating the ring to the Narset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you really blame him? I forget about Narset all the time. <laughs> yeah, some of these uh, constant triggers on these Planeswalkers are uh, a little tough to remember sometimes. Planeswalkers with passives were a mistake. Changed my mind. <laughs> Fairy. Down tick onto Fairy. Down to the Eagles. So Jody can, again, plain cycle that Eagles and then get it back with Amiria. Mm -hmm. We'll probably see him just do that because it's kind of like a quote unquote flash threat a little bit. Fairy coming back, back down here for Garrick. Ticking up. Down ticking the Narset. Let's see what he finds here. Preordain. I think that might have been his only option. I think the other two were yeah. two lands and the solitude. solitude. Yep. Unfortunately, that has to bottom in the solitude because it does add to the clock here mm -hmm. and kills Jody much faster. Preordain's still a very good pickup. Do you think it would be in Jody's best interest to concede for time here? So that way he can complete games two and potentially three. I think quite possibly. I think this is uh, Eric's heavily in control here. It's going to be very difficult for Jody to pull ahead. And in order to get to uh, their next game, possible concession uh, might be necessary for them to complete their matches. Yeah, neither of these players want a draw. Neither of them can afford it. They're probably playing for top eight on breakers at this point. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. If Garrick's able to close out this game and they do not finish a game two, it will go to Garrick. Absolutely. Jody's still fighting the good fight. He says, Kami of the False Hope, your turn. Kamigawa staple. Subtlety comes down. Spins that Kami back on top. Let's see what he does here. He's thinking about it. Field. The Solta Triome. Yep. Again, there are no more basics in Garrick sack, so he will fail to fa find, but he will shuffle. I think Jody's also failed to find at this point. All right, Kami goes back on top from the subtlety trigger. But the subtlety is nice here because it's still progressing the clock. Another ring, so Jody's going to have protection, so no attacks coming in uh, next turn for Garrick. Yeah, Jody's electing to keep the one with four counters on it as opposed to the one with zero, deciding that if I can ever take out this Narset, it might get me back in the game. Mm-hmm. Down tick to Fairy here, putting that Eagles of the North back in Jody's hand. Yeah, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Can I go seven? Taking eleven, down to seven. I got 18. up to 18, and it's looking real grim for Jody. He's probably going to do the uh, plane cycle trick again, maybe? Did he not just cast ring last turn? Chose to keep the uh, other oh, one. Oh, you're right. He Jody should forgot about the ring protection. He should have a ring trigger here. Again, long day with these grindy decks. Yeah, let's see if they catch it. It is uh, Jody's job to remember the trigger, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, oh counterspelled. Not counterspelled, okay. 
Oh, I see. The yeah, I, I'm over there. No fault of Jody, then. Our bed did not see the counter spell get cast. Yeah, there are moments. currently lots of permanents on the uh, battlefield right now. So down to two. From 50 to two. Wow. I really didn't know if he was going to be able to uh, deal that much damage, but here we are. Garrick's at 18. It looks like Jody's going to pack it up. Alrighty. It looks like we're going to go back to the booth while these players sideboard. I hope you all have been enjoying the coverage of the Hunterbird Memorial Open this weekend. It's been a ton of fun, both as a player and a spectator a lot of great matches at the top tables a lot of drawn this weekend yeah i was gonna say are you surprised to see anything here this weekend uh I, there's more mill and tron than i was expecting for sure i think um there's a whole lot of like rogue decks as well there mm -hmm. was crab vine was doing pretty well for a little bit um yeah there's a lot it looks like we're going back to the match jody's gonna be on the play yeah, Crabvine was uh, doing well. I played against it at when I was four and two. Actually, so sorry, Spike played against it when he was four and two. I and played then against, you played it, against it, it around later. A player was very excited to be uh, playing his Crabvine. Well, shout out deck. to that Crabvine player. I think his name was Kevin. <laughs> Beautiful deck too. Yeah, I've the... never seen the uh, Secret Lair Vengevines. They are gorgeous. Yeah, the yar. Yeah, in quotations go in the text. Beautiful, look them up. They're lovely. <laughs> so Jordy brought in Stonebrain. What do you think his name was? Stonebrain. That's stuff to stay here. Possibly the ring. Getting those uh, back and forth um, ring matches really hurt. But he could also uh, try to get a piece of the Narset Days and Doing. Comp. I was going to say Narset. Yeah. Narset hurts Jody quite a bit because his entire deck revolves around abusing the ring. And oh, there's the Ben Fine. Ben coming up here by one of my favorite secret layer cards. <laughs> we'll hopefully be uh, playing vintage later this year with it. Yep, name's Narset. All right. That checks out. Makes a lot of sense from Jody's side here. Big fan of what uh, the Stone Brain has done for Modern recently. Stone Brain's good. Karn target, too. Mm -hmm. and it's like a recursive Karn target, so you can keep getting it back over and over since it exiles itself. For a lot of these non blue decks, it's really helped uh, kind of uh, turn the tides of being able to deal with some of these threats. Absolutely allows decks of any variety to have this like necromantia style effect. Mm -hmm. So Jarek does get to draw a card because one of the Narsets was taken out of the hand. We see, I believe that's Mystical Archive, the blue white surveillance. Nope, it's Hedge Maze. Hedge Maze, I'm so sorry. It was the blue meticulous green. Archive. Meticulous Archive. Absolutely. One, two, Teferi goes to the top, Fetchland goes to the bottom, rips Teferi. It's like Jarek's just playing face up, so that way Joe doesn't have to write down all this information, save a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Good for the camera too, we can be reminded of what's in hand right now, on top of the unknown cards in his hand. Yep, you're true. Grabbing a lush portico with the Eagles of the North. More surveillance action. I have absolutely loved what these surveillance lands have done for modern. It's added a whole new dynamic of card selection and minor percentage points that Merc Tide players love. <laughs> what do you think uh, the green's for? In, uh... That's the Haywire Might. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Being able to pop Haywire Might target rings is pretty yeah. important. I don't know if. Like we have Jody's list in front of us. Uh, I don't know if he's playing any other green cards in the sideboard. It's maybe he's playing cop copies of Pick Your Poison. Pick Your I think Poison Haywire has Might been really is good. The preferred. He has two copies of Haywire Might. Yeah. Uh, just the two he also cards. has engineered explosives, so that green might add a uh, oh, another sure, counter sure. for explosives. Yeah, no Pick Your Poisons here. Prefers the Haywire Might because it can be recurred with a Biting Grace, mm -hmm. which is huge. Except green. 
Californian? Yeah. I, I'm going to float a blue. Sure. Jarek said, I'm going to float a blue in response. Curious to see what he's doing with that mana here. Maybe casting a solitude. Mm -hmm. I, I doubt it. I mean, it's just a martyr, not very threatening. Fetch. Martyr's probably going to pop sure. in response. Oh, definitely. Cast a solitude? Sure. Oh, yeah, cast a solitude. Okay. He, maybe he just wants those beats on the field. Yeah, just a main phase solitude. I can honestly respect it with the games going as long as they do. Reveals Elishnorn with the Martyr and Winds of Abandoned to gain six life. If he's got another land in hand, he could just hard cast that Elshnor next turn. I am sure he does if he's only revealing two cards or he's just got two copies of Reprieve that he wants Absolutely. to keep. Sneaky. Yeah, there he goes. He slams it. Slams it so fast. As he, oh, you, you just tapped out a counter spell? Bet. That Solitude will not be able to exit. Oh, but we dropped the fairy off the top, bouncing that Elshnor back in hand. Counterspell back up too, so if Jody redeploys this next turn, it will meet the counterspell. Wow, that was incredible backup from Garrick. Yeah, we saw him top hat the fairy early on with the hedge maze. Mm -hmm. and it paid dividends. Or sorry, was it the preordain, not the hedge maze? Yeah. Jody in kind of an awkward spot now. Doesn't get much freedom to play instant speed because of this Teferi. You can still activate, like, Field of Ruin at instant speed. Yeah, Even this is going to need a counter spell here. Counter spell. I think that's one of the best cards that uh, Jody had and unfortunately is now back into the graveyard. Jody might have a ring in hand that he would rather resolve through the counter spell as opposed to the Elish Norm, but Jarek's got a ring too! Ooh. Wow. Showing just how important it is to have ring in these stacks. He's Shot. gonna get so much advantage here. Gains net one life this turn. Is this another counter spell? That would be incredible. That's gonna really close the gap for Jody to really do anything. The Winds of a Bandit could take out the Solitude, but like, that doesn't do that much. Um, yeah. With another Solitude in hand, and the Kahira as the companion, we could still develop a decent clock here. Okay, we're gonna try to take Garrick off some of these colors. Basic Island, I imagine. Yep, Basic yep. Island. A beautiful one at that. You know what set that's from? What set is that? I, I was asking you. <gasps> I think the, I believe that's one of the ones without a set symbol. Oh, is that one of the like special eight pack lands? It might be. It's possible, yeah. yeah. It looks like it. I, I don't believe that to be Tempest, though. I might be wrong. Either way, it's a beautiful island. Absolutely. Beautiful Plains as well comes off of that Winds of Abandon. It's like... Oh, get lost here on the Teferi. Not a card that sees a lot of modern play either, but it is a powerful one. Two map tokens coming on the side of Jerry. Can deploy that solitude and start pumping it up, perhaps. Draw two. But not before drawing two. Oh, here come our map tokens. Yeah, Gintlust has uh, been in a really interesting place this weekend. Really uh, targets a lot of the ley lines from the rhinos builds and everything. Poor rhinos. I gotta play them the world's smallest violin for their loss. <laughs> I've still seen quite a few copies this week, and we have another Mind Stone sure. coming down. Stone or the Stone Brain, so sorry. <laughs> They're so close. <laughs> Long to man artifact. Yeah, the, uh, the sure. Mind Stone would not be good here. The Stone Brain is very good here. Unfortunately, it does meet that counter spell. So, in response to the Stone Brain being cracked, Solitude comes into play on the side of Jarek, and Jody's like, hmm, what should I name? At oh, this it did point. not get counter spelled, my oh, bad. Yeah. Um, subtly. Name Subtlety. It says, I'm going to try to take all your win conditions and win the game through attrition. Does Jody have just one card in hand here? It's a Solitude. Just the Solitude, all right. If he Solitudes the Solitude, Jarek's going to be really light on win conditions. How many Solitudes uh, do we have left in the deck is the question. I think there's two. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's going to be really hard to close, especially with uh, Jody possibly gaining more life. But we do see the counterspell in Jarek's hand, so I imagine the Solitude is just going to get counterspelled, and this one Solitude plus the K here is going to close the game. Yeah. We'll see. Jody Keith is also pretty low on time here. Uh, again, if it ends in a draw in this in this uh, particular game, it is going to be Garrick's win. Yeah. I'll leave that there. Sure. 
Leaves it on top, double maps the solitude. Leave it again. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. He's pumping up that yep. solitude, getting ready to go. All double mapped up on a Sunday. <laughs> in for five. 19 to 15. Yep. Oh, three, one, two, three. Moving back up to Fairy. Place Tef. Eric has so much control. This is the spot you want to be in in this match. Oh, yeah, that counter spell is going to be huge. Let's go. I think Jody picked up a land. I couldn't quite see. Oh, no, it's a Skyclave Apparition. Eric still has that counter spell, and it's yep. going to meet a counter spell that uh, Solitude. Takes it up to four. This is just such a commanding position from Jarek. There's the Daze Undoing, but Narsa got Stone Brain, so I don't think that Daze Undoing is ever going to come down. Yeah, probably not here. We're probably going to want to. Yeah, we see the get and play Kahira. Elsewhere. Solitude 6 power. That's a beefy Solitude. Big Solitude. Garrick's going to gain all that life as well, putting it further out of range for Jody to try and knock him down. I like the finesse that Jarek demonstrated that attack with. He pointed to the Solitude, he said, 6 you. <laughs> With Gusto. I think uh, Jarek also thinks he is in a pretty good position here. Yeah, you can see Jarek picking up the pace here. Sure. This is the final. Yeah, time has just been called in the final round of Swiss. Even if Jody somehow a meteorite comes down. I was going to say, like, hits sure. the modem, but this isn't moto. <laughs> yeah. If something happens to Jarek, that's the only way Jody would win this game at this point. Mm hmm. We are likely going to see it go in Garrick's favor here. Yep, yeah, Prismatic ending hitting yeah, that Skyclave immediately. A 3-3 illusion token comes down. Three, four, five, six. Yeah. That's an attack for nine. If we can remove the Haywire Might. We do still have a prismatic might. ending in hand, so that is likely going to be able to happen. Well, the Haywire might can sack and eat the ring in response and gain two I'm life. That's true. This is in your hand? This is in my hand. You know these three. Um, Supreme Verdict in hand, also not doing too much from. Uh, now, a lot of dead cards in side. hand for Jared, but I just don't think it's going to matter at this point. Mm -mm. So far ahead on board. Yeah. Jody's hellbent. I'll, um. He's all this again, too. 11. Yeah, not too many top decks Jody can have here to pull this out. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. Once these control decks get ahead and gain an advantage, it's hard to come back. Mm -hmm. I refer to this as garbage time. Garbage time? Garbage time. Yeah. This is for a top eight winning and potentially, depending on breakers. Eight. Jody down to three. He would need a miracle off the top of Terminus, perhaps. Uncastable because of the Teferi. A six mana Terminus, maybe. <laughs> yep. Even that, it's going to be hard for him to come oh, back in turns. Three. Planes and scoops. And Jarek won the match. Yeah, congratulations to Jarek for potentially making top eight with an unconventional blue white control list. Yeah. We've seen Blue White make a little bit of a comeback recently, but it's been really good this weekend. Yeah, it seems like it was a really good call for the weekend uh, yeah. against maybe all the Tron matches. Uh, Control usually has a pretty good hand there. I, it depends on how many Ulamogs, I would say. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I'm i surprised. I didn't think that Control necessarily had a great like Yawgmoth matchup mm -hmm. or maybe even Tron to a degree because there's a lot of Tron at the top tables. I was absolutely baffled by walking by and seeing how many undefeated Tron players there were. Yeah, I've seen all sorts of Tron this weekend too, not just Mono Green, we had Eldrazi Tron, Mono Blue Tron, putting yeah. up results. And it makes me think that Coffers is going to make a comeback pretty soon here too, because Coffers is a very similar big mana style mm -hmm. to these Tron decks that I think that Coffers could potentially be pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see what the top 8 deck lists and standings end up looking like. Blue-white control might be in there. 
Yeah, we've seen a breakout of the Esper Gorios list about like two weeks ago now. How do you feel about that over this tournament? All right, looks like we're going to go to our backup match, but you mentioned Esper Gorios. Esper Gorios is a very powerful strategy that has just made a resurgence. It was kind of on the fringe side of decks before the Surveil Lands came out. It was playing like Fable and mm -hmm. Splash Red and sometimes Leyline Binding. But now with the addition of the Surveil Lands, you could just be like a more clean Esper mana base and still get your Atroxes in the graveyard very rapidly. And here we are with Sam Higgins on that mono green Tron we were talking about. And Sam Mark Wad on Azorius Merfolk. It's the Sam Merfolk at the top tables. Yes, yeah, the Sam Mirror match here. Sam but v Sam. I'm going to call him Sam M and Sam H just for <laughs> simplicity. Because I don't think I can pronounce Marquois <laughs> very reliably. All right. I don't want to Aether Vial on... That's always a very powerful play and tough to deal with. Oh, yeah. Looks like the Tron player started on Urza Saga. Maybe they're looking for a map here from that Urza Saga pop. Yeah, potentially. Cracks the Chrome Sphere. Floats a green. Haywire, Haywire might. might. Taking care of that Aether Vial. That is... Very good for uh, Sam H here on Mono Green Tron. Um, little less value from the uh, Zurius uh, Merfolk player. It looks like we might have a judge intervention here because I think Sam cast the Haywire Might. Oh, no, it looks like it's just going to be subtlety. Okay, okay. It looked like he might have cast the Haywire Might using the green mana and not tapping the Urza Saga. Mm. But we're just going to subtlety the Haywire Might. Let's see if that goes on top or bottom for Sam H. It's going to go right on top. I think that seems like a pretty good play there. Reasonable. Want to get rid of that Aether Vial to prevent. Yeah. Again, that just uh, that, that Aether Vial just accrues so much value. You really want that out of there. Yeah. And Sam actually misses second land drop. So he's going to be very heavily relying oh, yeah. on Aether Vial. If this Aether Vial is going to be haywire mited, it's going to be tough for Sam M to potentially just cast more than one creature a turn yeah getting to that two mana is so important too that's where all your uh, that's where lords uh that's where you, you kick a tide shaper you need two lands you cannot yep. kick a tide shaper off of an aether vial mm -hmm. and tide shaper is one of the best cards if not the best card in the matchup because it just shuts off tron turning your tron lands into islands they no longer are recognized with the urza types therefore you cannot have your seven mana Correct, and looks like the Haywire Might is going to take out the Aether Vial. Again, nothing vialed in in response on the side of Sam M. Yeah, so it looks like he's probably got no one drops, which is not a good sign. He needs to hit the second land drop. Yep, absolutely. Probably hoping to rip one off the top, and a second Haywire Might, too. There's the one that he left on top, and then the one off the Urza Saga. Mm-hmm. Maybe he drew a second one. Kind of missed what he got off the Urza Saga, but nonetheless, missed land drop off of Sam M, drew a Lord for turn. Passes right back, and this might be kind of a non game. Oh, we have assembled. Tron assembled. This our power plant and mine. Karn okay. the Great Creator coming down here. Gonna see what he gets from the sideboard. Krista, I hate to call it so early, but this game's over. It's a little tough. Yep, they yep, started Sam picking it up there. Sam yeah. agrees. He said, You know what? That's fine. I'll get you on the play. You don't have to be stuck on one land, no one drops besides the vial and the vial. Eating the dust pretty early on here, so he accrued no value from that. Yeah, very sad for Sam M, because I typically think this is a great matchup for Merfolk. Yeah, I would say so as well. Um, Fast clock plus land disruption is the perfect recipe for beating Generally him. really tough, especially uh, spell pierces and stuff coming yeah. in. Chef's kiss. I would. The Merfolk is such a great deck beating Tron. If I had to pick any deck in the format to beat Tron, it'd be Merfolk. Hmm... That or Titan. Sometimes you just get them. It's tough. Titan's back. But yeah, it's mm. not great for Tron. Shuffling up for the sideboard games here. A little bit of banter between them. <laughs> but it's like, ah, I do the Aether Vial. Yeah, I know you do the Aether Vial. That's why I topped the Haywire Might. <laughs> I love banter like that back and forth. So now they are both one and one. This will be the deciding game. Yeah, Merfolk on the play now. Possibly uh, making those breakers. I'm not sure if they can top eight. They're both nine and three here. 
it's probably on breakers again, just like the last yeah. match. It looks like that's a Cura the Great Glass Spinner in hand. Wow, I haven't seen one of those in a while. What a heater of a card that is. Yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily... it's particularly strong uh, against the Tron matchup, though. Dismember is a very True, potent yes. removal spell against Merfolk, and if you want to protect your Tide Shapers, it's a decent way of protecting it, although mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit slow, so... We'll see how much of an impact Kira the Great Glass Spinner makes here. Mm -hmm. Looks like a couple of mulligans on the Tron side. Was it, did you see if they went to six or five? I'm not sure, but uh, being on the Tron side, you're probably not too upset with taking a few mulligans, the deck mulligans, very well. Um, Just got to go one, two, three, pieces. seven. Easy math. Yeah. One, two, three, seven. Being a 7-7 seven, seven cards dealt out, a couple are going to go back here if Higgins decides to keep this hand. Yep, he does decide to keep. I couldn't tell if that was two or... Not sure. Yeah. Island Pass, either way. Spell pierces the Expedition map. Oof. Let's see if Sam Higgins has a Tron anyway, Tide as Shaper. it tends to be the case. Target your Tron land. That's an island. That's an island that no longer... Uh, is recognized as in Urza's land. Nope. Gonna need another mine to come down if you want to make that seven mana acceleration. One, two, three, Svalun pass. Svalun is very powerful here. Just another land pass from Higgins. Might be looking at like Hold just on. hard cast ring off of four lands here. No indestructible yet because there there does need to be a third merfolk on the board, and there and it is. is. And that that's a good one against the ring, too. Oh, yeah. Sacrifice, uh, you have to pay one more. Yep. Any non-creature spell. And Sam not having uh, Tron right now is going to make it really hard to pay that tax. Yeah, no O-Stone either, but it wouldn't even kill the Svalun at this point because Svalun does have Indestructible. Sam M is oh, running away with this here. game. Scoops it up. Here we On go. On the side of Sam Higgins, Sam M is advancing into potentially the top eight. Merfolk is king here, unfortunately. This for... is crazy. This new modern meta post violent outburst. Merfolk, blue white. What's next? Yeah. What else is going to make top eight? Many things opened up. Yeah. It's been very interesting to see here uh, what the meta is. I even heard there was an undefeated Asmo deck at the end of day one. I don't know wow. how they're doing day two, but if there's like an Insidious Roots Asmo deck, Spike's going to be so happy. <laughs> is that right, Spike? Yeah. Very, he said very happy. I don't know if you can hear him. He's on screen, but we'll get him on screen. There we go. Yeah, look at him. He's ready. Like All right, looks like we have the bracket for top eight. Is that correct? Because that was the last match? Okay. 